I'm Danielle from Wendell Woodworks, and today I want to talk about an important technique on the scroll saw, stack cutting. Stack cutting may sound like a very simple technique, it's just cutting more than one layer at a time, but how you use this technique can totally change your scroll saw game. To stack cut, you simply attach two or more layers of wood together to cut them at the same time. The obvious benefit of this is that you're able to do twice the amount of work in potentially half the time, although if your stack is too thick, it could actually take you twice as long to cut. But I do stack cut a lot when I make ornaments, for example, or sometimes I like to cut letters with the stack cutting effect in order to have two flush pieces that are exactly the same, but I can change the color and add some pop. But another benefit of stack cutting is the ability to create dimension and layers within your scroll saw work. So today I'm gonna to get started on a Christmas scene. I drew this church on Procreate. Do not ask me how long it took because I am not normally a drawing artist, but I wanted to create something that gives the effect of a Christmas Eve service or Christmas Eve mass. Right now it's very flat, but what I want in the finished project is for this church to have a lot of dimension with layers to really make it something special. So to cut this church, I'm gonna start by selecting and stacking four layers of material. This will give me at least four different layers of dimension, but even more than that, if you include differing thicknesses of material. Four is a lot of layers, so keeping that in mind, I'm using three sheets of 1 8 inch hardy board. This isn't actually my favorite material to use because of the backing, but it's what I have, and I like using what I have on hand, but you can also find a lot of 8 inch wood that's been milled to size, or even 8 inch plywood. But I'm using three sheets of the 8 inch, and then I'm also using this quarter inch plywood that I have reclaimed, and I think this will give the church a really nice face, and it'll make for some nice like wood stained awnings and things like that. Like that. So I've got these four layers and I'm going to attach all of these by applying some transfer tape to the tops and bottoms of each layer and applying some spray adhesive to stick them together. You can also do this with painter's tape or contact paper, but you want to protect the wood from the glue. And now that they're stacked, I'm placing my drawing right on the top. And now here comes some of the mental gymnastics. For me, this is the hardest part of the piece. It's just figuring out what's in the foreground and what's in the background of your picture. I'm gonna explain to you my process, but if you find all of this super confusing, just ignore me, cut out all the pieces all at once, and you can always manipulate the layers later. For me, I'm gonna look at my picture and I'm gonna divide them up into four groups and then number my pieces based on how many layers they're going to have. So first, I'm gonna start with what I want to come out the furthest. So looking at my paper, what's going to be in the foreground and pop out the most? I'm gonna number those things with a four because they're gonna include all four layers. So those are things like the snow up here, the awning, this snow, this awning, the steps, the snow, the trees. These are all things that are gonna be right up at the front. Then I'm gonna see, okay, what's gonna be a step behind this layer? So what's gonna pop up next? It's only gonna have three layers. It's gonna be the middle of the church here uh, probably the steeple because I want it to be behind this awning, but I still want it to be further out than the background. So these are going to have three. This is going to all be three up here. The snow and the awning on the back. These are going to be even further behind this layer. So I'm going to give these a two. These are only going to have two layers. And then the trees back here are going to be what's furthest back. So this is going to be layer one because it's only going to contain that back MDF layer. These are going to be in front of the windows. This is going to stick out a little bit from this layer. So you kind of get the idea. Then there's another category that I kind of call my fives. And those are things that I'm not even going to worry about until the very end. And that would include this light here. I'm not going to worry about it when I'm cutting the rest of my pieces. This is something I can cut at the very end and then just stick right on top of the doors once they're finished. The same with the handles and the same with these lights here. I won't cut these until everything else is said and done and these can go on last. So are you thoroughly confused yet? Is my brain a little too crazy? It might be, <laughs> but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this to the scroll saw now and I'm gonna be using a number five modified geometry blade. It's good enough to cut through all the layers and it's such a good blade, it'll be able to last me this entire piece. And I'm gonna begin by cutting out all of my fours. It's kind of like a color by number, except that it's a cut by number and I'm going in reverse order. So let me show you at this off. Now I have all my fours cut and just to help me out later, I went ahead and glued some of these pieces together. I also manipulated some of them so I switched the layers around because I want the snow to be a different texture than the church itself. So the awning has the wood on front and then I moved one of the MDF layers to the top for the snow here and the snow here and then I'll do the same for the steps. I'll move the MDF to the top. So I have my fours down here and now I'm going to go back to my pattern. I'm going to remove the back layer here 
which is the MDF board. I'm gonna take one of those down, so I'm down to just three layers, and then I'm gonna cut all of my threes. Okay, I just cut out all my threes, and as you can see, the dimension's really taking shape already. As I cut out the threes, I went ahead and glued the layers together as I went piece by piece, just to make it more manageable. Um, I also, again, manipulated the pieces in order just so that the MDF for the snow was on top instead of the wood piece. And now it's time to cut the number twos. This is all that's left, but this is where it gets really confusing because I don't want to cut the holes of the windows through all the layers. I want a layer of MDF left as it is that I can kind of paint maybe just a pretty white or yellow glow so that you can see through the window. So I'm going to leave the back of the two just as it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and drill my pilot holes. And because the window sills are threes and I want them to pop out, I'm going to leave that other back layer of MDF on two. My contact paper is not staying attached very well. Cut those out and then I'll put the number threes on the window sills and then just cut out the windows of the last layer, number two. So we are down towards the finish line here. And voila, all the layers are cut. I did my twos, I did my ones. So you'll notice I decided to use both layers of the hardy board for the tree back here just to pop a little bit and it's still further back than the church. So all the pieces are finally cut and glued except for the number fives that I mentioned, which were the door handles and the little light and the Christmas lights, which I'm not for sure I'm going to do yet. Um, but believe it or not, it had actually been three hours of cutting and gluing for me. So not as fast as this video made it look and my stomach is growling. So I'm gonna take a lunch break and then we are only halfway through. The fun part is going to be finishing all of this choosing the colors and stains and the sanding just to kind of give us more dimension. After my stomach was satisfied, I went back downstairs, picked up my Dremel, and I used my disc sander to round over the edges piece by piece. By this point, I had already glued the layers together, so I could also sand off any extra wood glue as well. I also used an engraving tool on my doors. A trick that I use for finishing the tops of my snow banks is to cover the seams with dry decks. Once dry, you can sand that down really smooth to give you a seamless look that you can then paint over. I would show you all the finishing I did, but that isn't the point of this video, so I'll skip ahead to the good part. Here is my finished project, but I love the idea of recreating buildings that are of personal meaning to you. You can add depth and dimension to any project you're working on by stacking those layers and playing with them. Well, I hope that showing you my method for this particular piece, more than confusing you, maybe showed you a technique that you can use in your own scroll sawing and helps to inspire you in your own work. And if you wanna learn about the Pega scroll saw that I use and love, you can check out this video here and subscribe to my channel for some more project tutorials and tips. Thanks for watching and happy scrolling.